So, <clears throat> this is a video on uh, the sixth king of ancient Rome uh, and the second king of Etruscan dynasty uh, because Servius Tullius is particularly important uh, for then the organization of the Republic. So, again, we are not sure about the exact dates, but for sure we know that he was the second, the second of the Etruscan dynasty, so ruling in Rome in the 6th century BCE. So this name, Servius, uh, it's um, uh, a name rec um, recalling uh, uh, the condition of slavery. Mm? So in an account, uh, Servius is described as a slave, then marrying a daughter of the first Etruscan king, uh, Lucius Tarquinius Priscus. But Livy did not believe uh, to the story that he was born a slave, uh, so it was impossible for a slave then to marry a princess. So he said that probably Tullius' mother was a king of an Etruscan city sacked by the Romans, so captured uh, together with his son, and then to pay homage to her regal origins, she was allowed to live in the palace. Then there, are, there is another legend um, coming from Emperor Claudius that uh, has been one of the first uh, scholars about the Etruscans, one of the first Etruscologists, and um, according to his legend, Servius is represented as a mercenary soldier named in Etruscan Mastarna. And he attached himself uh, to the princess of Vulci, the brothers Vibenna, and especially to Silius. <clears throat> then, after various adventures, Silius was beaten but Mastarna came to Rome with the remnants of his army, and so he named the Cilian Hill in Rome after his friend. So, this story is about, uh, the stories about the fact that he was a slave uh, are probably um, ways to explain the name Servius, uh, which looks like an adjective. Uh, ser servus, slave. But it's very interesting about the legend uh, of Mastarna, what has been found in a tomb in Etruria, in the city of Vulci, so in Etruscan city, in the so-called Francois tomb, completely frescoed, and um, uh, on the frescoes of this tomb, there are figures of soldiers, duels, uh, and uh, uh, there's a figure labeled Maxtarna, and others labeled Vibenna, Vibenna brothers. So, this is very interesting uh, to find both uh, in literature and uh, in archaeology mm, this connection. So, but Mm, it's still a mystery why, uh, if Mastarna was Servius, uh, why he changed his name like this. Then, let's see what's reported about Servius. Uh, the fact, especially, that he undertook important building projects and expanded the city, and then that he probably built the city walls. There are long stretches of the city walls uh, still standing in Rome, and there's a part uh, uh, dated in the 6th century, but then was replaced later uh, in the 4th century with a new wall. The most important thing mm, for a course about the Republic is uh, the administrative framework. So, before Servius, uh, when he became king, Rome was divided in three tribes, so three ethnic groups. The Latins, the Sabines, and the Etruscans. So, 
increased by the arrival of more Etruscans together with their kings, uh, uh, the populace, the people of Rome, had been divided uh, by Servius uh, not only in three ethnic groups, uh, but into uh, four uh, urban tribes on a territorial basis. Then he divided so the city in four and the territory uh, in ten rural tribes. So each citizen now was attached to his ethnic group, so to his tribe, and to his area, tribal area, because he called these areas tribes too. So according to this, each citizen was subject to military service and to the tax, the taxes uh, of their tribe. So you see tribal tax in Latin tributum, that's uh, uh, at the root of many modern um, uh, words uh, um, uh, relating to taxes. So, <clears throat> Each of the three original tribes was divided in ten curie, and the representatives of these smaller groups were responsible for the civil affairs and then met together as required by the king to discuss but not to decide about matters of national importance. So, um, before there was uh, um, um, a system of clans uh, uh, in which then the ten curia were divided, uh, sorry, the three tribes were divided in curie. Then curia um, will become a meeting place, especially the meeting place of the senate, but more importantly uh, the curia um, was generally the name of a voting group. Mm? So in the assembly of the curie, mm? so we will describe this kind of assembly in uh, the part about uh, the organization of the state in the Republic. According to this new system, uh, through which he wanted to uh, integrate all the newcomers, so the increased number of citizens in Rome, he, um, he uh, based his new system not only in the ethnic tribes and um, uh, territorial tribes, but on residence and wealth. So, this involved the census. So the first sentiment uh, uh, of history recorded sentiment uh, had, had been done by Servius Tullius to register all free adult male Romans and their properties as a sentiment today. So through this census, this sens uh, sentiment, uh, he divided the a population in five economic classes. So um, through this he improved uh, the administrative and political organization of Rome. Mm -hmm. For example, um, creating a political assembly, mm -hmm. uh, the assembly of the centuria that was the expression of the census system. Why of the centurie? because this political assembly was organized in hundreds. Centuria means this, hundreds. And uh, so the Comitia Centuriata was the assembly of the Centurie, of this uh, hundreds. Then, so the origin of the word Comitia, mm, so assembly, uh, is uh, coming from Latin, the Latin verb the cum ire, meaning to go together, so to group, uh, to create an assembly. Then, so, uh, in a passage of a late author, uh, Gellius specified, so this uh, is the name of the author, 
he specified the distribution of the population in political subdivisions. So saying that when you vote for the class ethnic group, uh, the comitia are called curiata. Do you remember the three ethnic tribes were divided in curie? When you vote uh, according to the sentiment, the census uh, uh, and your age, uh, the assembly is called centuriata, according to the hundreds in which um, were divided the five economic classes coming from the census. When you vote according to regions and places, so your territorial area, the assembly was called tributa uh, from the uh, territorial tribes. We will see better uh, uh, in the part on the Republic. Then this uh, sentiment and this new organization in economic classes uh, define also a new military organization. So duties and rights uh, in the civic army Mm. So, uh, civic means an army constituted by citizens, according so, uh, to class uh, and so the wealth, the financial status of each citizen. So, each of the five economic classes, as we said, were divided in, was divided in centuri, in groups of a uh, hundred men. And so, this uh, hundreds, these centurie, were both a military unit and a voting unit in the comitia of the centurie. So <clears throat> the citizens were all equipped and fed at their own expense. So you understand that uh, the financial status was important. Mm? in the military service that was both a duty and considered a right of each classified citizen according to the census, were only exempt those uh, uh, whose census, so whose financial status was lower than the minimum. The first monetary unit of the Romans uh, uh, was a head of a cattle, uh, and from this uh, we have uh, the Latin word for money. Pecus is head of cattle, pecunia is money. Then the ass was uh, uh, originally a pound weight in uncoined copper and then became uh, uh, a specific coin, mm? as you can see from uh, this. Uh, uh, list of Roman coins. So from the first class okay, that had the preeminent position reflected also in political organization came uh, 18 centuria of horsemen, 18 centuria of foot soldiers, all armed at their own expense and that had offensive and defensive weapons. From the second, third and fourth classes came 20 centuri apiece, a, totally, a total of 60 of lightly armed foot soldiers, two centuri of engineers and two centuri of musicians. The musicians were important, uh, not only to make enjoyable uh, the time, but uh, for uh, military um, signals. And then from the fifth class, so uh, the uh, lowest level, uh, came 30 centurie of men armed with slings. And then there was the one non common centuria, so those with no property but registered uh, for their pr um, person. So totally the centuria were 193. And these were also voting groups. So <clears throat> let's see the origin of uh, the Roman legion. Mm? 
At this time, commanders of the army raised their armies by summoning citizens to gatherings where they chose their soldiers from those eligible to serve. So, the force raised in this way was called a legion, which signified that it stemmed from a selection process. In fact, the verb leggere means to collect, to pick. Leggere, legion. So under the kings, the legion selected each year was the army of the city. In later century, the term legio, legion, came to denote a unit of several thousand men serving under one of the commanders who held office for the year. So became only a unit of the army. So to end the story of Servius Tullius, as time passed, uh, Servius increasingly favored the most impoverished people in order to attain favors from uh, them. So his legislation became the more and more distasteful to the patrician order, so to the nobles and the richest. And uh, his reign of 44 years, according to the dates uh, gave by the historians, uh, was brought to, to a close by a conspiracy headed by his son-in-law and his own daughter. Uh, and uh, so he was killed in a horrible manner. Uh, the conspirators order a chariot to be driven over the body of uh, uh, the old king. So the son-in-law mm, was Tarquinius the Proud, Tarquinius Superbus, so the third and last king of Rome that we have said, uh, we have said um, was uh, uh, expelled, cast out by the Senate in 510, so giving way to the establishment of the Republic in 509. Uh, under his rule, um, the Etruscans were the authority of their power and uh, the authority of the monarchy became absolute. So he acted as a tyrant, as a Greek tyrant, eh? so with uh, an absolute monarchy. So uh, this is the end for the part of the, the kings. And then we will start with the, the uh, very beginning of the Republic.